Now, welcome to uh, Focus here on France Van Kat. Now, they live in constant fear of police harassment, physical attacks and even torture. They are migrants who've tried to get into the European Union but been refused and returned to Ukraine. It's under a new year-old agreement that allows EU countries to send migrants back into Ukraine immediately rather than having to properly consider their asylum applications. Well, now Human Rights Watch has found that many are being ill-treated and the organisation is calling on the EU to abandon the agreement. It says Ukraine has neither the will nor the means to offer migrants who are often African or Asian the chance of a new life. And it says those sent back end up stuck for months in limbo, scared even to go out on the street. As our correspondent Gulliver Cragg found out. Asylum seekers in Ushgorod are wary. These Somalis are only outside because they've got to go and get their temporary permits to stay in Ukraine renewed. But even with those permits, they live in fear of police harassment or physical attack. They didn't want to be seen talking to a journalist. One of my friends, some racists, they kick him in the eye and the, and the mouth, and he was in the hospital for two days. So there is a lot of racists. We have to take care, otherwise they will, we will suffer. One place where migrants do feel safe is at the offices of the Medical Aid Committee, a local NGO. The group gathered here all fled fighting in different parts of Somalia in the last two years and ended up in Ukraine via different tortuous routes. All agree that Ukraine has nothing to offer them. I saw many people, Ukrainians, that they are saying that we also have, we don't have money, we don't have anything. They are suffering also, most of them. Yet those who do make it across the nearby Hungarian and Slovakian borders are sent right back. When we got to Hungary, we asked for asylum, but they didn't say anything. After 24 hours there, they said they would not accept us. The Ukrainian police came, they spoke with the Hungarians. Then they just handcuffed us and took us back. When we got to Ukraine, we were beaten for two days. Budapest, Hungary. A delegation from Human Rights Watch is preparing to meet Hungarian officials and lobby them to stop returning migrants to Ukraine. We've interviewed a total of 50 migrants who have been returned from EU member states to Ukraine and more than half of them said that they were severely ill-treated and a minority, in total, a total of eight persons, said they had been tortured. Ukraine's border service says officers guilty of beatings have been fired and conditions in its temporary detention centres are improving. But spokesman Serhii Brovko admits that there is frustration on both sides. Sometimes there are individuals who will fake some kind of illness and demand to see a doctor every five or ten minutes. Brovko takes us to a place where migrants are often caught. To him, the real villains are the people smugglers who bring them here. Behind those trees there's a road. They take them there and just point that way and off you go. And these people have no idea where they are. Thanks to EU funding, the guards awaiting them in the no-man's land are ever better equipped. Yet the migrants stuck in Ushgorod see little option than to simply keep trying. That report from uh, Gulliver Cragg on the uh, plight of the migrants. Well, joining me now from Geneva is uh, Simone Troller, who you saw in that report, in fact, from Human Rights Watch. Firstly, just explain to us why the EU actually signed this agreement uh, to return people to Ukraine in the first place. Was it simply a case with they just couldn't cope with the sheer numbers? Well, not really. I mean, Ukraine is not a major entry gate into Europe. It is an important entry gate. But this agreement that was signed between the EU and Ukraine is really part of an EU policy that seeks to put the burden and the responsibility these persons generate on the country next to Europe. So Ukraine is not the only country with which the EU signed such agreement. But it is an important one. It doesn't seem to be working in this case, though, does it? Well, the problem is really that these kind of agreements are based on the notion and on the assumption that Ukraine guarantees a fair treatment to persons returned from the EU. And our research clearly has shown that this is not the case. So what have you found? Well, we found that a, a strong majority of persons who have been returned from Hungary and from Slovakia to Ukraine have been subjected to either severe ill treatment in most cases and in some cases to even torture uh, through electric shocks. And why do you think it is that bad? 
Well, you have to understand the context in which those kind of abuses are taking place. Ukraine is under a lot of pressure from the EU to stop the flow of migrants towards Europe. And it has also received a lot of money to do so. And it is in that context that those kind of acts are taking place. And unfortunately, one has to add that um, those acts happen in a climate of impunity with a very limited capacity of the judicial system in Ukraine to hold those who commit such acts of torture to account. And presumably also difficulties with the Ukrainian people as well for those people who've been returned on the ground. Well, clearly, um, Ukraine has and is, continues to be a country of emigration rather than of immigration. So there is, you know, a, se a severe difficulty for people, especially of dark color, to integrate. And they face uh, a lot of difficulties on a daily basis um, in Ukraine. But that just comes on top of the lack, you know, of protection and the lack of a secure environment for them in Ukraine in the first place. So who do you blame for this? Is it, is it simply Ukraine's fault? No, clearly. I mean, we say this is a consequence as well of the U European Union's efforts to stem and to divert the flow of migrants and of the U European Union's assumption that Ukraine is able and capable of treating every person in a humane way. So we put the finger as much at the EU as much as we put it at, at Ukraine. And clearly our conclusion, our main conclusion from this research is that the EU should immediately suspend all returns to Ukraine until it is shown that Ukraine is in fact capable of, of treating each and every person it receives back in a humane way. And do you think they would ever get to the stage where they would be able to, to cope with the sheer numbers? Well, I don't think Ukraine is flooded by the numbers. Ukraine is clearly scared that it will be one day flooded by the numbers. And, and that is certainly a concern, you know, that, is, that comes, comes out when, when we spoke to officials in, in Ukraine. But the numbers aren't that Hi, Ukraine is not the main entry gate into Europe, so it is not a question of coping with the numbers at this stage. So it's it, really a question of ensure, assuring that every person is treated in a humane way. So it could be uh, just a, a suspension of the agreement, maybe, while, while something is put in place. Well, what we say, well, we say Europe has a legitimate right to control its borders and to control persons who, who seek to enter, to enter Europe. But that right cannot come at the expense of a person's well-being. So if Ukraine is capable of protecting refugees, of treating every person in a humane way, then we do not necessarily see a problem of returning persons to Ukraine. But again, this is not the case. And finally, uh, I mean, you know, we, we have uh, made a lot of criticism of Ukraine. You've also alluded to the fact that it, it's partly the EU's fault. But presumably the EU, when it bought this in in the first place, it should really have carried out some, some better checks, if you like, to, to ensure um, that people were, were not going to be abused in this way. Uh, and therefore the fault really lies with the EU. Well, we would say partly the fault lies with the EU and with EU member states who send migrants back to such risks, the risk of being severely ill-treated and of being tortured. That is clearly the case, yes. Simone Troller uh, joining us there from uh, Geneva, from Human Rights Watch. Thank you very much for uh, speaking to us here Thank on Fulton well. And that was uh, today's Focus. More news coming up. Stay tuned.